you know, I'm an advocate of keeping Juan Soto for 2024 because I think 2024 is another year where you got to position yourself to win, considering this payroll and the players you have in their primes. But I, I don't know. I, I don't know how the organization sees it. I don't know what they're willing to consider when it comes to Juan Soto. He's kind of the one piece, Ben, that creates flexibility for you. These other players with no trade clauses and hard to get out from underneath of. It'll be interesting. Would they consider moving him in the offseason? I wouldn't do it. Would they consider moving him at the deadline? Well, certainly, if they're not in it next year, they would do that. But he's the one player that gives them a little bit of flexibility to kind of change their, their fortunes moving forward, potentially. Yeah, I, I think that they'll consider it because AJ considers everything. Sure. Like, even the most wild things. And we can stay on Juan Soto here. Bob Nightingale wrote in his Sunday notebook, I don't know if you saw this, you know, he buries all of the more the most important stuff. Mm. in that like 2000 words in uh he was talking about how several gms are predicting that the padres have no choice but to trade soto after their horrific season i, I think the padres certainly have a choice here like i don't think that they feel that they're forced to trade juan soto it feels like peter seidler's someone that's like we owe it to the fans to go all in and try for 2024 especially after not working in 2023 and having this big disappointment of a season and Juan Soto is going to help you win ball games in 2024. You may not keep him long term because he's going to want $500 million or there'll be some team that's going to probably want to pay him that. And maybe you don't want to pay him that. But I don't think you make your team worse and give up Juan Soto in the offseason without giving it a try first. And then at the deadline, if things aren't working out, then, yeah, you can move him. Yeah, I mean, he's to your point, there's no way he's forced to move Juan Soto. Now, maybe there's an argument. And again, I, I'm not making it, but is there an argument that you could – be a better team in the absence of Juan Soto. It's, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but when you consider when they traded for him last year at the deadline, it was a team that was well over 500 and they hadn't, you know, but Fernando Tatis Jr. hadn't played. You didn't have Juan Soto at the time. Uh, they were on track to make the postseason and then have a run. So, like, you know, that's the weird thing about baseball. It's like you get so, we get so, um, you spend so much time thinking about the stars. You know, you, you hear Shohei Otani is a star. Mike Trout is a star. But it, it's such a team game. And it's as much about your middle relief and as much about your bench or as much about who bats seventh, eighth, and ninth as it is who bats first, second, and third. So can you make yourself a better team in the absence of Juan Soto? I'm sure there is a path to do that. I don't know if A.J. Preller can because he hasn't always navigated these situations well. Is there a GM in baseball that could turn Juan Soto and create a 26-man roster? Um, that's better suited for 2024, potentially. But the way I look at it, it's like you gave up a lot of your future. This guy's 25 years of age next year. He falls out of bed at roughly a 900 OPS, which means he helps you win. Um, so I would, I'm would, i running it back, at least with Juan Soto, and seeing where I am in the middle of next year. And yeah, I'm not getting the same thing as a rental, obviously, as I would in the offseason, but you're in the business of winning games for, for the Padres right now. So I'm willing to take that, that risk.